Ooh, I'm a nocturnal animal. I'm an owl. <laughs> so yeah, we just saw Nocturnal Animals, the new Tom Ford film starring Amy Adams and Jake Gyllenhaal. And a bunch really, of other that's actors. that's your opening. Yeah, I got nothing. I, I'm just trying to do something. <laughs> but yeah, just because they they mention an owl in this movie, that's what I. Yeah, it was pro so. probably intentional that they uh, <laughs> when uh, the the cop uh, Michael Shannon, Bobby Andres. When uh, when the criminal asks who who are you talking about, like who you're so what are you an owl? <laughs> so I, I think that I think that's exactly the point because pretty much everybody in this movie turns into I guess a creature of the darkness. I guess this is this movie is as Susan puts it total junk. So you didn't like it, but total junk with a purpose though. Uh, so you did like it or didn't? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I did. Yeah, I liked it too. Like, I thought it was qu interesting. Quite, quite a bit actually. This this movie is really layered and and um, and and it's it's it really the movie is really screwed up, but it but it is so because it's got a purpose mm -hmm. and. Because like like the movie Eyes Wide Shut, it exposes people's like like secret sins like right before your eyes, and and man, this yeah. <laughs> and I guess and I guess um and I guess it does so because you have to go to. A dark theater to see it. I guess so it's so. asking you to get in the darkness there and see all this. So yeah, this this movie is quite a this movie's quite a thought provoker. Yeah, there's still a lot and, of stuff I didn't I don't understand, but there's like I think I can I'll probably will eventually and yeah, I'm pretty I think sure I people do videos on it, like Renegade Cut will probably do a video or some other. I I, I think I, I think I get most of most of it. I think. Um, it's something I have to think about, definitely. Yeah. So, what's going on here is that uh, uh, Amy Adams plays a woman who has, who has like a uh, a deteriorating second marriage with uh, Army Hammer, and and so she sent a a the first copy of a book written by her ex husband, who's played. Extremely well by Jake Gyllenhaal. I think this. He is... also plays the main character of the book too. That yep. she's reading. She's during the movie. She's reading his book, and Jake Gyllenhaal is the main character. Yeah, because everybody writes about themselves. There's really nothing else that someone could write about. Well, okay, that may not be exactly true. So does but... that mean since Tom Ford also wrote the screenplay, does that mean he's also writing himself in these characters? I don't know, himself or Jake or something. I don't know, but. It kind of, it just kind of, it panders back and forth from Amy Adams, then her, then her, her memor, then her, um, then the book that she's reading of what have Jake, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's book, and then it also goes to her, it also goes to her, uh, her past too. Yeah. And, her and as yeah. and as she as she reads the book, she really, she really starts to examine her life, and because this is what it, it seems, it's that. It's that uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Edward, her her ex husband, has written this book directly for her, which is uh, evident by the first page, which says for Susan, mm -hmm. and and um, man, there's a, a lot of thoughts to maneuver through here. Yeah. Um, well, I guess that's for me. So about he, the acting. What do you think of the acting? Yeah, the okay. acting is fantastic. Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal, especially, and Michael, Amy. Michael, Michael Shannon's also really good. He's yes. in it too. Yeah. Aaron Taylor Johnson's great too. As this evil, this like jerk who, in the book that Jake Gyllenhaal wrote, he's like some. He's the guy who basically ruins his life, and it's just really, he's really good in this too. So, yeah. <laughs> I think Amy Adams should uh, actually get a uh, an Oscar nom for this rather than Arrival. I mean, she was good in Arrival. Here, she's excellent. She's pretty good. Yeah, and um, and so so her ex husband has written this book, I guess because he, because like in the here here's what goes on in the book too. It's that he 
He gets harassed by... Oh, great, the light went out. Man, those batteries go so fast. You should get a new light. Yeah. So while uh, driving through the desert with his mother and... I mean, <laughs> wife and daughter, mm -hmm. he gets harassed by, like, these roughnecks. His mother, wife, and daughter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so they, they get a hold of his car with his wife and daughter in it, and and so he, as he as he uh, as he gets help from uh, from uh, Bobby Andres, uh, the cop played by Michael Shannon, um, he wants to uh, he wants to uh, do what he, he wants to do what he can to bring them to justice. Mm -hmm. And in the process, in, in the process, he, well, I guess we should go into spoiler territory. It's fine. End. It's fine. No, just not, maybe not spoil maybe the ending or something. Like maybe just, it's okay to spoil a little bit of the story. Because about the, tell, we can tell him about how his wife and daughter yeah. get murdered or whatever. That's fine. Yeah, because as he does so, though, kind he's of part, kind of. Because yeah. that's kind of important to the story. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. But so he's trying not to, uh not to turn into, I guess, a nocturnal animal himself. Even with, uh, even with this, this old cop who's dying of lung cancer. And so the, the cop just, I guess he just kind of thinks, well, I'm dying, so I may as well just embrace my demons, because he, he really abuses his job. He wants, he wants to have, uh, he wants to have uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character in the book, whose name is uh, Tony, yeah. he he wants to have Tony shoot them right there in the, in like that that cabin. And an, another thing that uh, m maybe this was a little too obvious of symbolism, but to get to that cabin, they pass right by a church. <laughs> I don't so, know. Maybe. Yeah. But I, I think though, I think though, it's trying to say that you can. You can always just come out of the darkness and into the light, I guess. But Maybe. whenever, but at the beginning of the movie, well, not the very beginning. The well, the very, I think it's an abandoned church. It looks like the the windows are boarded up and stuff. So it's probably an. I think it's an abandoned church. It used yeah. to be like a church or whatever, but now it's abandoned. Maybe that's the point that it's an abandoned church. That. Maybe, maybe, the very, maybe the it's the idea is that there's no God here. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The ver the very beginning. Near the very beginning, when when uh, Susan pulls into her garage, they put emphasis on how on how as the lights come on, she's trying to shield herself from it. And then at the end of the movie, um, I'll get back to that in a bit. Well, and so as as Susan reads this story, so she. She considers her own life and how she thinks that uh, it's apparent that as as Edward that Edward writing this book is like is kind of like himself in the story trying to I guess uh, trying to find his uh, his um, wife and daughter because they they've been because like Susan they've been taken away. By these creatures of the night, mm -hmm. and he he finds the two of them um, w with the sheriff cop. Yeah. He finds them dead and n and n <clears throat> dead and naked outside on mm -hmm. on like a sofa. Yeah. And so shortly after that happens, um, as like a, as Susan closes the book, she she calls her daughter in in the only scene that her Real, that her real daughter is in. We see her with, uh, I, I guess, her boyfriend in bed in a very similar position as we see yeah, the, the, the mother and daughter. The mother and daughter. Yeah. I, I guess symbolizing how how her daughter has already become like uh, another, taken away another by the. Another symbolism I kind of got was the part where they find Aaron Taylor Johnson on the toilet. That part I remember a lot of people laughed. Heard well, Ooh, when they saw his when he showed him. His I guess stuff. because he's just not afraid of uh, of just uh, showing himself in. Well, because I think it's because he's like dirty. He's like a dirty. I think it's supposed to show how dirty yeah. and like rotten he is. Like that's why he show because he kind of shows it on purpose. He kind of shows his. 
yeah. the wipe on purpose, I think, because it's to show how dirty and just kind of grimy yeah. the guy is. I think that was the idea, I, th- I think, that scene. Though, of course, I don't think most people understand it. They'll just probably just think it's just like, ew, this, well, I didn't need to see that or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one, one thing i got to say, one thing I've noticed uh, a lot about uh, about um, movies that uh, that have a lot of nudity in them, uh, I'm I'm not one to just uh, get really to just get really nitpicky about uh, about movies being sexist, but but this is a very reoccurring thing I see in movies like this. They're not afraid to to show a woman naked from all sides, and yet for some reason they they just they're just really shy about showing a man's manhood. Well. Well, I mean, they, they they did show Aaron Taylor Johnson was pretty naked in the the part. Well, yeah, pretty much so. But well, they don't really like. Well, then again, they only the only the only the only part where you see like full frontal female nudity was the credit opening. Yeah, credit the, which honestly, I'm not. I, that's the that's the part I I, I really don't get still. Yeah, well, because it, I mean, I kind of people get... like watch people like in an art show or something, and yeah. there's uh, and they're and they're like these videos of uh. Of uh, like, really, of like, they're really fat. They're like these really fat like ladies that are naked. One of them has like a scar on her, her stomach, of them dancing or whatever. Yeah, I didn't really notice. And then, and then, I, then, I then had those a hard same ladies watching. are also. Then those and ladies, then they're, they're like lying dead. Like, well, they they keep changing positions too. They keep changing positions a bit. There was a part where you see like they can't change positions yeah. a bit on their, where they're laying down. Yeah. Uh, I didn't notice a whole lot. I was uh, I. Found uh, that would, really hard to watch. Of I course. just, I just sat there watching the whole thing. I didn't really care. Uh-huh. Like I've seen, I, I don't know. I've seen way worse. <laughs> Still, and I don't know. I guess, like I said, depends on. Uh, well, I'll have to see what his intention for the opening. I guess the uh, was. I guess the reason for them being fat is just to assure that uh, that the audience is probably getting the point, and not just getting turned on. I guess. I guess. Yeah. But it was still. I don't know. Man, I I kind of feel dirty just talking about this movie. <laughs> I, yeah, I maybe that maybe that's the point though. Just oh man, this because like this movie, I think it, in a way is supposed to make you feel uncomfortable a bit. Yeah, the way, it is. The way, the way it is, even like without the the sex or violence, it's still like the way it's shot and it's really dark and grimy and stuff. I think it's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable a bit, and I think that was the intention also. Just trying to maybe the opening credits was supposed to show kind of be like a for basically what you're getting or whatever to make you feel uncomfortable. Then again, yeah. like I said, there's a lot of people who are into really weird crap when it comes to art. And not just stuff like that. Just like, I've seen way weird. I've seen a lot of weird crap. Like, I know... Well, not, even I've heard, too. Like, I know a teacher of mine, she knew, she knew a lady who... You, her art was... She used pee in a bunch of stuff or whatever. Really? Yeah, human pee or whatever. Mm. It's like, it's like, ugh. It's weird. But, mm. but art... There's a lot of weird art out there, I guess. Because it's new agey stuff. Like, the, there's one where it shows art and it just says revenge in a weird way. I'm like, what is that supposed to... What is that art? I think, I think what that... I think what that's supposed to mean is that, uh... Is that, uh... Doesn't it seem that uh, whenever, whenever, uh, whenever someone hurts you, the thing, the thing that turns people to become a nocturnal animal, just to uh, just to use that term in the, in the case of this movie, the thing that when someone hurts you, the thing that turns you into a nocturnal animal is always revenge. Yeah, also, I don't Which, think you ever really see much of Amy Adams in the in the light. Mo- she's always at. She's always. It's always dark. Yeah, I, I think I think that's also the point too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but the only time yeah. I think you ever see most like the sun most of the time is just in this book that Jake Gyllenhaal's writing. Yeah, that he wrote her. <laughs> whatever you most that's where you see most of the sun or whatever. Although the last time that you see that you see Tony in this movie, and that's in uh, and that's in the real world. Which uh, I guess that's another theme in this movie: the real world versus uh, versus like a, a fake world. Or maybe what, what was what were the words they used? I'm not um, sure. Yeah. So 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 I guess it's that um, that Susan lives in the real world, and by that she's just embracing her demons. I guess. And just embracing the darkness because the world is dark. It's screwed up. And yeah. I don't know. Then again, like I said, there's still a lot of stuff I have to, I don't understand. I don't completely understand yet. So yeah. I'll have to I think mean, about. I 
think about this, it. This is going to be one of those movies like Eyes Wide Shut where I just spend weeks thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So the, la the last time that we see Tony is when uh, Susan is in, in her car with, with, with her current husband. And I, I guess what happened is that uh, she, she talked, uh, excuse me, not Tony, I meant Edward, the last time we see Edward in the real world. And so I guess she she talked Edward's daughter into getting an abortion. And so, what, what was that daughter the, the same one that she called earlier in the movie? No, wasn't it Amy Adams who got an abortion? I thought it was um, Amy Adams who said she got it or something like that for. And then that made well, she sense. she said something uh, um, about what what she what she did to his daughter Edwards. Oh, and so. I think that's what happened, and so okay, maybe. I'm not and sure. so as they're in the car, she sees Edward standing outside, and that's the last time that you see him. You see him at least. You see him as Edward. You still see him again yeah. as like the other character from this book. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this. Yeah, this I'm, is I'm gonna have to watch this again, at least. Yeah. yeah. And I, still, I, honest, I, would still I honestly don't really want to though, because. <laughs> I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind seeing that, but um, yeah. I would definitely. I also still recommend I've, uh, his first Tom Ford's first film, a single a single man, was really good. Yeah. Though, except it will, the main character is gay, but I don't think there's any there's I don't there, I don't think there's any sex in it though. Like there's I think they kiss in one scene, but from what I remember, it's there's like I read the premise. It's just kind of what he does as he as he grieves the loss of his. Uh, of his, of his, uh, of his lover who died like one year earlier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, but it's really good. I really like it. I, I still, I'm not sure if I think it, if I'm thinking this one's better or that one. I'm, I have to, I'd have to really think about. It. Also, it's been a while since I've seen a single man. So, but I remember I really liked a single man. I thought that was really good. Yeah. Wait. So, want to finish this up, or do you want to? Oh no, bye. And so. I guess now uh, we should uh, get into spoiler stuff. So, so in the story, uh, Tony, Tony does end up, end up killing the guy who raped and murdered his wife and daughter. Mm -hmm. And so, but as he shoots him, the guy like picks up a crowbar or something and hits him in the face with it. And when he wakes up, when the sun rises, he's blind. So, and so, like, when the light comes in, he's now, he's now just blind to it. And then he falls and then he shoots. falls and dies. And what, what, as, as that ends, did I hear this right? What did, uh, Susan say when, what, what did Susan say right before cut to black, five minutes before the end, and it is the last line? Did she say, it worked? Is that what she said? I can't remember. But yeah, but didn't but the movie actually ends with like Amy Adams like in a restaurant or whatever and then it just kind of cuts away. Yeah, because um, well, it fast forwards and then like obviously, well, yeah, she she texted Edward and they scheduled another get together time and I guess she went to that restaurant to meet with him, and he never shows up. Yeah. I guess now he realizes that that um, I guess that Susan is just too far gone and so he realizes he can't he can't turn into a nocturnal animal himself so he just so he just lets her go maybe mm. let's see i haven't seen the yeah also i thought amy adams looked really good in this movie yeah. and just and well one, what a one interesting film so yeah. let's get that's great it yeah sure. that way because there's some trailers i want to talk about and i don't know how long i'm gonna talk about those so, <clears throat> so what do you give it i'm probably gonna have to give it an a i mean i I gotta think about it more, but I. But right now, I think that's. Uh, it seems pretty. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it seems pretty appropriate. I'm a little. I'm still a little conflicted, but I'll give this a B plus for now. Thought it was really good. Yeah. It, it's definitely a movie. I think that more people. Should, uh, well, not everyone, because of course not everyone's gonna get this film. That's why I was surprised when I looked at the Rotten Tomatoes and I saw that the the user score was higher than the critic score. Like, yeah, it's usually mm -hmm. the other way around with a movie like this. Yeah. It's usually the 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 user score that's way low, but this yeah, one's this way has higher. like a seventy two. Eyes Wide Shut has a seventy seven. Critic um, score? Yeah, critic score. Huh. And yeah. 
But yeah, this is definitely this is definitely isn't everyone's movie, but I do I actually would for the most part recommend this to at least people I know. I thought this was really good. B pl I give this movie a B plus and you give it an A. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Sorry about this. Bye. Or do you want to talk about uh, the trailers again? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so I'll just give them a. We, we we both we both. You said you're interested in Zookeeper's Wife, right? Um. Yeah. I I, I guess sort of. Um. And what about you said Miss Sloan? You're interested in it, right? As well. Yeah, kind of. That was actually the first time I had uh, ever seen that seen a trailer for that movie. And it kind of looks like the... Uh, I saw it online already. Yeah. Like. It kind of looks like, though, the establishment in this film is going to be like... Uh, it's just going to be like really cartoony, kind of like the villains in Purge Election Year. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll still give it a shot. That can, that gets a, a wide release around here next week. And right. um, okay. I hope if, that, if that does come around here, we, sh we should definitely just go see that then. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, uh, I think uh, I think the only one that's uh, that we know for sure is coming is Office Christmas Party. Well, which... and if you don't really want to see that, we could just and if Miss Sloan is here, then we could just see Miss Sloan and Rules Don't Apply if Rules Don't Apply is still out next. Yeah, week. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> we can just see those instead. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh... All right. See. You yeah. Next no week. Nocturnal Animals. Um, yeah. Yeah. I. It's a movie. I kind of. I. I kind of feel. A little dirty, just recommending it, but I'm gonna have to. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't feel that bad about it. Unless, like I said, unless you're like really, like if you are, maybe maybe if you are like a Chris Jenner or whatever, you probably wouldn't. But like I I, I recommend this to most people I know, anyways, who don't care about this kind of stuff. Because I don't. I I still think the Neon Demon had a lot way worse like stuff in hell. That has a scene where I'm not gonna talk yeah. about that has a little yeah. risque. Although um, although uh, the the some of the people that we saw it with the people that were cracking up at stuff yeah. like uh like the uh just those those uh I know, it's photos like, of uh, they're obviously adults but they're laughing at it like they were 13 like i would have like, i yeah. mean i totally would have if i was 13 i'd be like Ooh, hoo, hoo. yeah those are kind of people that uh i don't think are going to get anything out of watching this yeah, yeah so that yeah yeah i recommend it it's uh probably the most thought-provoking film this year so mm -hmm. let us just hope that uh well you didn't see the neon demon yet though yeah. i kind of get what that movie's going for because i've seen videos yeah. on it and i've really thought about the neon demon what they were doing with that and i was like okay i get it now yeah. let's just hope that no nocturnal animals are created in the viewing of this film <laughs>